All right. Hey, everyone. I'm Cynthia Conte for Ring TV. I've got a special treat for you guys, Miss Terry Belter Harper, the WBC Super Featherweight World Champion, and also the IBO Super Featherweight World Champion. We get that second British female boxer in history to hold a title, to win a title behind Katie oh, Taylor. I, I spoke to um, Natasha. Oh, this is going to be good. <laughs> Terry Harper, congratulations. Uh, I remember when I first saw you fight, it was, I think, the last DAZN card. And I'm like, who is this girl? Because I'm also the WBC influencer. So I always watch who's up for the belt. And I remember I was like, oh, my God, this girl. Who is it? And then I tweeted. I'm like, she almost looks like a school teacher. No offense. And then you're like, school teacher. I tweeted, but I go, this girl is going to be a problem for the division. She's going to be a problem for women in boxing. You... Well, you're going to be fighting backyard boxing, ba uh, garden boxing, matchroom. Uh, you're going to be defending your belt. How do you first feel about it? You, I've seen you working out, pandemic. You are kicking boys, like guys' ass. I've seen you running sprints, and you're just surpassing these guys. And I'm thinking, God dang. How, like, I, how do you feel, Terry? I mean, first, as a champion, as a WBC champion, and now you're going to be defending your belt again. Obviously not not in the place that we originally wanted. Um, it was scheduled to be back at Doncaster Dome, um, which is my hometown. Your and that for me, yeah. for me, it's special because that's where I've made my professional debut, uh, boxing for Andrew and on his small old show. So um, I was very excited to fetch Sky Sports and, um, uh, yeah, matching boxing to Doncaster. But um, obviously when, when the pandemic... Um, started and everything went on to lockdown and the fights got cancelled um now i'm just very grateful that i'm having the opportunity to box behind closed doors there's thousands of boxers all around the world who are itching to get back in the ring and here i am one of the lucky ones and not only to be back boxing but i've got the opportunity to headline as well on one of these shows where all eyes are on you really mm -hmm. i remember the last time i saw eddie it was in Texas. It was pretty much the last fight ever. And I told Eddie, I go, Terry Harper, I always bring it up to people. Like people are like, oh, Katie Taylor, this did anyone ask you about Terry Harper? He said, I no, I said, she is going to be a problem. He, and I go, eventually we would like to see her, her with Katie Taylor, one of your idols. Well, you beat Eva Wil Wallstrom for the WBC title. And that was a very tough fight. You're 23 years old. You're very young. Um, and, and for female boxing and just the way you move in there, you are relentless. You, you would not stop. Like I knew you were going for that knockout and, um, I, it's, I'm getting chills because I'm seriously one of your biggest fans. You made me, me I became a big fan of yours. Uh, you're 10 and 0, five knockouts. That's actually very good because a lot of women have high records, but very little knockouts. Do you consider yourself a knockout artist? Um, so, the, my, main, my stoppages were mainly coming when I was up at, um, up at Lightweight and I, I think I had like, I on a four, four streak uh, run with the knockouts and then um, obviously I've dropped, back, I've dropped down now to Super Featherweight. So, um, my last stoppage at Super, uh, Super Featherweight was uh, for the IBO and then, um, but now obviously I'm, I'm stepping up and I'm getting in the ring with these tougher girls and um, we're trying not to look for that knockout. We're trying to get the experience and just making sure we're uh, we're comfortable and getting the win because that's that's the main that's the main job. Well, you are facing a, a veteran. Uh, she's been in the ring. She has in ring experience. She's a former Olympian. Uh, she was the first British to uh, go to the Olympics to qualify. She fought Katie Taylor. So she's, she's not just some newcomer. And she said to me that um, you are young, you're hungry, obviously, but you have what she wants. You have the belt. And that's the yeah. only way she can go to the table to get another fight with Katie Taylor. Uh, you've said that you want to stop this fight yeah. early. What do you know about Natasha Jonas? Um, I know um, she hasn't made this weight for two years. Um, and last time she met this way, it was against Vivian Obanoff, mm -hmm. and she had the bad, bad defeat against her. So, obviously, I'm not going to be going off that fight, yeah. um, focusing on that in this. Um, but yeah, I think like Tasha's a mum, and your body changes. She's she's 36 years old now. Um, me personally, I believe Tasha's just this is Tasha's last chance, and um, 
I think she's going to struggle out the way and she'll just not be able to keep up with me and my engine on the night that she always goes on about. <laughs> well, she said she is coming in as her best version and uh, I've seen you spar. You, congratulations on buying a house. That's, that's Thank you. I'm not going to say the American dream, but that's everyone's dream. And I saw you set up shop. You hitting the uh, hitting the bag. You never you never stop training, which unfortunately some people have. You consider pandemic training. I mean, you and your manager trainer uh, Steffi. I see you guys doing your six feet apart, like a mile apart, and uh, you've always kept up with it. Everyone was in a dark area. Everyone's fights were getting canceled. Uh, we didn't know that when fights were going to happen in the UK. What gave you that drive during pandemic to continue? I just knew, um, even though I didn't know the time scale, I just knew that this big fight was always going to be happening. Um, so I just, I thought this is a time where I can get one up on Tash. Um, as well as also uh, me, like, like you've said, I've, I've not got much experience in the ring. So this is where I've been learning. And uh, this is, yeah, it's where I've been learning. Even if I'm on my own in the garage, I've just been working on stuff. Um, I, I've, 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 I had the old FaceTime calls with Andrew and he was talk, talking me through stuff and just, just really practicing my craft. I mean, you, you just went pro not too long ago. And I mean, you have made a name for yourself for the people that don't know. I mean, Google her. That's all I'm going to say. She's got, she's got a hard hitting. Um, you just, you just hit really hard. <laughs> like you hit really hard. So when I said, I'm like, you, you look like a school teacher. I'm like, but you could still kick my ass. <laughs> But, uh, you're going to be fighting a southpaw, and you've said in training that um, you've been tr you've been fighting or uh, sparring southpaws for only five months. I mean, southpaws are very tricky. She's a very very <laughs> tricky fighter. Fight, are you sparring with men? Yeah, um, yeah. So we've got um, Jason Cunningham and I. Jim is a two two time Commonwealth uh, two time weight Commonwealth champion. So um, he's been in the ring with. Uh, top top boxes and there's no one he hadn't really shared a ring with so um we've worked closely with jason um before the lockdown and then um when things started to get relaxed jason uh luckily for us he jumped straight back into where we left off and uh, we just got cracking on with it and i remember at the start of camp i used to go in thinking oh my god i'm doing south pole sparring i'm sparring someone's south pole and now it's just everything's second nature and I don't even think about the South Paw stance or anything like that. I'm just that used to it now. And I said to Andrew, it's going to be strange when I have to go back to sparring, sparring orthodox or fighting orthodox. You know how a lot of people end up switch hitting. Can you switch it? Uh, I, I can. I, I, I never mess around in the mirror from time to time. And I do it odd times in sparring, but it's not, it's not that I, something I really work on. But I did, I was saying earlier today, it is a very big advantage if you can switch it. And it is something that I would love to learn to do. You no, know, I, I know the folks in Yorkshire, are Yorkshire, like you guys are passionate. Like UK fans are passionate about boxing. But Yorkshire, they always say when you come up from there, the girls can kick your ass. Like, <laughs> uh, do you have a message to your fans to all tune in? Yeah, I, I um, obviously they're not there on the night, but I know that all eyes are on the TV, and I hope they all enjoy the show. Um, and yeah, I hope everyone has a good, safe night. Yeah, you know that since you are fighting with no crowd, uh, because you are you're used to fighting with big crowds. How do you block that out? Yeah, how, how does one fighter do that? Um. Because you need some to, you need the crowd to like cheer you on, yeah. motivate you. Some fighters, yeah. but you, how about you? For me, I just um, as soon as I'm walking out to the ring, it's blinkers on. Um, I know the crowd can get behind you, and um, like if you land a good shot and you hear the uproar, and then you think, oh, I need to go again. But obviously, for me, when I'm fighting, I don't, I kind of don't let the crowd influence me, and I'm listening. I'm just listening to my corner, and I know it's it's going to be different on the night, but. Um, also, just stick to listening to Andrew and what he's got to say and stay focused on the job. Uh, do you have a message for Natasha before you guys step into the ring? Um, just, obviously, thank you. Thank you for accepting the fight. Um, obviously, the situation we're in now is quite... We're quite lucky that she's a British fighter as well. Um, and, yeah, just for her to enjoy, enjoy this, the big night and the big stage and... Uh, just wishing her all the best for the rest of her camp and I'm excited to get in a ring and share, share uh, 
fight with her. I'm really excited. Um, this is going to be an exciting fight to watch. Can you do me a favor? Can you just flex? You've got some, like, I love your arms. I'm, I love arms. I love <laughs> on triceps, everything. Can you just give me a flex? Oh. I'm sweating. I'm a bit sweating. It's all right. You just got out of training. It's totally fine. I don't mind. Well, um, you guys tune in. Terry Harper is looking to be and still the WBC and the IBO Super Featherweight World Champion. This is going to be exciting. August 7th, Matchroom is putting on a show in Eddie's Garden, Backyard Boxing, as I call it, on DAZN and also Sky Sports. Well, Terry, good luck to you. Be safe. And um, I can't wait to see you fight. And she says she's going to be the new. And you say you're going to be end still. So we're going to find out August 7th. Terry Harper, good luck to you and your team. Stay safe. Uh